being recorded in theory yes it is okay so we're starting our meeting really we're going to go there go back to that site we're going to start here just to refresh everybody we know this is the activity um, announcements are usually important things um, i'm telling you guys that next time in announcements i will post um, the links to all these videos in an announcement. Um, I'll probably get rid of the early announcements so that only one will sit there. Um, okay, we're doing that. So that's announcements. Looks like that. All right. So these were just messages that went to you. Uh, do they go to you, by the way? Do you guys get a notification that there's an announcement up? Yes. Okay. All right. Perfect. Then um, that'll be good. So I'll do that. And then you guys normally go to assignments, but I want to, so we'll do that just to show. And here we have the ones. <clears throat> so this one is kind of no need to worry about the first part one anymore, because unless you want to, because that's where you would be putting your ideas, the things you think you're going to compare. Um, we did a good video either last week or, yeah, I think it was last week. Um, explaining that and as a matter of fact if we go to the part two where the complete draft is due um we have our star right here our thumbnail person ilsa and um <laughs> you, i know so this is the comparative analysis right it's talking about it's due it tells you what you're supposed to do but if you click on the video maybe i'll click for a minute and see what happens i wonder if we can get back out of it Oh, there it is. If you click Actually, on the video, is which is and long, so we're done. who's we talking? If you click on the video, you can look at the link. if you guys click on the video, you can see there's a lot of talking in it. But if you just go through the part that you want, so we're going to go like this yeah, and do it. So, Great. I love that. Yes. Yeah. No, I think we were talking there. Here. Here's. Um, you guys can see this? Here's where we start. You? <laughs> yeah. Ah, well <laughs> All right. So I wanted to start with the home page. I mean, the page to go when you guys are on. Okay. So, so there's that. Okay. And then eventually, when we get here, then she's a single person. No. Can you send that again? Uh, Here we go. So it's not until we're about, oh Lordy, an hour into it, I guess we're talking about the comparative one. Um, so if you look, we talk about the whole thing, we explain it all. Um, so maybe, uh, you know, skim through the thing, speed through it to where they start talking about the, um, Comparative analysis. Now, this was, I think, one of the first ones we made. So I wasn't, I wasn't aware that all this conversation we were doing was being recorded. So I'm not doing that anymore. We're talking first, and then we're starting the instruction. So in any case, you can find out what to do with the uh, comparative analysis piece right in here. I have to change this. This is not visual analysis comparison. So I'll change that title. I think I already did. Okay, so we get out of that. Um, so that's this one. And then if you wanted to look, I think you guys get a notification, but just to show you what I see, oh, what this is, what I see, so once you guys submit it to the piece, then they come up on my screen like this, and then Elsa's gonna be the example, and then I mark them. So um, going down there, we can see that she submitted this paper, it's the whole paper. And there's messages on the side telling her what she needs to fix. So again, if we click, if we put our little point on marriage, the little line goes all the way down to that second one. And it says, okay, Mary is the verb, tells her what to do. If we put our pointer on this one, it goes right over. So it's supposed to add an it to the sentence. And there's other stuff like that. So if you guys send it in, I'll mark it up like this. Um, I'll also write something over here. In her case, she just has to fix some stuff. Um, for some people, they might be missing a paragraph and I'll type that here, hey, you're missing a paragraph or other stuff I'll type in there. 
So um, that's pretty good because then people know, you know, what's going on. Okay. Yeah, that is very good. It's very good. It works, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay. Works. So, Mr. Osborne, so like yes, you, then. you put the little gloves or balloons there linking to one another. So linking to the comment. Yes. So I guess we have to go yeah. back to our paper. We cannot edit that one, right? No, I don't think okay. so. No, okay. that's, that's done. Okay. Um, but what you can do is you, so you can have two screens up on your computer when you're doing it. You can be looking at that on the, on the canvas thing and then move to the other screen. You know how you do where yeah. you're actually fixing your paper or yeah, make yeah, a yeah. split screen. However you want to do that, you can do that stuff. Okay, so um, assignment wise also, oops. So these are the ones we're working on. This is the one we were working on. Um, it, when you correct this one, if you have to revise, you post it in this next one that says revisions, comparative analysis revisions, you're gonna post it there. For people who still have to maybe revise the so Mexicans are taking jobs, you would post it here. Um, and then the definitional argument paper, if you're fixing that one, it would go here. Um, if you've never turned in the so Mexicans are taking jobs or the um, definition American dream paper, still put them in here where it says revisions. Um, because they were on campus papers and we don't have a place for them. So just put them in there. Okay. Um, so that's the assignments. And then um, if we go down to files, which is what we're going to be working with today. You have a lot of information here. These are mostly the handouts, but there are some videos included in there. So um, comparison contrast is what we've been working with. If you click on that, it opens up all those things we did. Um, so the, the articles are on there. Um, notes for the articles explaining it <clears throat> an example two examples of papers <clears throat> there's a whole bunch of stuff on there pretty much everything you need to write your comparative paper um, and then this little piece is something we used when we did made the video if you click on these you can actually see um, how we organize it in class this was last year um, in what is that october but it would have been the same thing had we been on campus. So that stuff is all there if you want to look at that. Um, okay. So that's the comparison one that people are working on. Oops. Back up. Okay. Yeah. okay. But today what we want to do is we want to look at um, the argument paper. So there's two pieces to this. There's the argument explained, that's in this folder. And then there's the research um, stuff. So the articles you're gonna be working with. Let me show you first the articles you're gonna be working with. So here they are. Okay, these articles um, were things that we used last year. Um, and if you kind of just go through them, first of all, this one says, this is the prompt. It tells you what you're going to be doing with the argu argument. So we click on this one, click on this one, and it comes up. And it's going to be saying something, hopefully. Yeah. Um, it's telling you, and it's a really not too complicated one. It just says, um, argue for or against Trump's attack on the invader, he calls them invaders, caravan as the best policy for American interests. So you're either gonna say it's a good idea or it's not a good idea. Um, you have to represent both sides though. You have to represent the people that think it's a good idea and you also have to represent the people think it's a bad idea to do both. Um, and you need research. So that's why these articles are enclosed. Um, I would also like you to go on the internet and find a couple of articles too, maybe more current ones. Um, you can look at things like, well, why are people immigrating? And we have actually a paper on that that's enclosed. But the idea is that this is not going to stop because the United States will always be a destination. Um, so when things are worse off, then of course they are everywhere almost, um, especially South America. And things are probably getting really bad right now because when the world economy goes down, then poor places really suffer. 
um, they really get squeezed. And, and we're talking, they were already close to having no food. Now they're starving. So you're going to see big movements of people still trying to get in here. And they can build a wall as much as they want, but desperate people will, will be desperate. Um, you know, and there's also violence over there. There's all kinds of reasons that people are coming. So um, use all the articles I have here that you're going to see, and then find a couple of more articles that are maybe more current um, there. Um, so here's one of the articles, and all I'm going to do is copy this. If you can see, I'm copying it. Highlight it and I'm going to copy and I'm going to close this one out. Oops. And I'm going to go to this thing, which you can see me doing it. I'm going to paste in that little thing, paste it in right in there. And if I hit it, it's going to take me to a bunch of articles. So this is going to help you do your research. Um, that's what it's for. It's to help you make you do your, do your research. Some of them are older. Um, 2018 is really not that old, but you're going to find some of them are newer um, than that, I think. So here's one in 2020. Um, again, there's another caravan. It's not, they're not going to stop, I'm telling you. Um, and then, so there's some more stuff. If you've noticed, there's lots of pages on this because it's an important topic. So if we just want to click on page four, um, this one's talking about how some people felt that what he was doing was kind of racist um, because he's he's pointing at brown people is really what he's doing and he, and he seems to do that a lot so I'm not really sure what his thing is but anyway um, so there's some more stuff on that that you could actually use we'll, we'll get out of that now okay so we're back here um, on our, on our, in our folder, looking at the different articles. Um, this is an interesting one here. It's talking about cause and effect. In other words, why are people coming? Like, what are they coming for? And it's pretty good overview. It sort of explains to you um, why they come. It's got a lot of pictures on it. Um, once, see how slow this is? This is pretty slow. So I don't know. It'll come up in a minute. But anyway, um, it's going to explain the reasons. And some of those reasons are kind of what I was talking about, that you know, people come for violence. People come out of desperation. Wow, it's taking a minute. There's, it's probably the pictures. They're kind of big. Let's see. Here it comes. I see it starting. There. Um, and this is an interesting one, because um, what it's really talking about is social science. So why are people coming? Um, you know, what is this about? If you look, there's lots of people coming. Um, coming from Central America. Uh, this one is, this article, by the way, is written, so here you can look here, by this person, Nisi Graf, that's the author. It's in the Washington Post. And this should be in italics, so you know it's sort of slanted there, right? So yeah. you, guys, you guys are going to put it in italics when you put it. So you're going to say the article. If you use this one, you'll go the article here, all of this stuff. This is a big article, but you would have to write this, write this down. In the article, blah, blah, blah. And you would put quote marks around that. You want to put quote marks because when you have an article to show that it's a title, you put quotes around it. Okay, um, and then you would say that this person, um, Graf, wrote about that in the Washington Post. Um, there should be a year on this, I think, if we find it. Yeah, in 2018, they wrote about it. Um, so you would put that all in your paper when you do the summary. Um, and here's information. Now, here's an interesting thing that I'm pointing out to you because um, the smart thing for us is when those countries are desperate, say it's food or, or they don't have jobs or something like that, it's very cheap for us to give them money to start up businesses or food because over there, the money goes a long way. Um, once they get to the United States, it's much more expensive, not only to build a wall, but also to feed and clothe people here. It's, it's much more expensive. But the problem is that the United States... Hang on. 
So Trump is saying he wants to reduce the aid. Now, when he reduces the aid, what do you think that's going to do? That's going to make more people come because now that he's really squeezing them. All right. What do you want to say? The problem is that the um, United States gives the money to the government, and the government keeps it to themselves and don't give it to the poor people. Yeah, some of that's true and some of it's not true. Um, we'd have to put, we'd have to be, do a better job with that. You're absolutely right. Um, but uh, we've done it before and we've done it very well. So um, we could actually incentivize some of the American businesses to actually start business over there. And in that way, the money would never go to the government. There, we, there are things we can do. Um, it's not beyond that. So I'm just saying that is a bad idea because um, that encourages people to go. This thing explains why are people coming? Why are people coming? Um, and so it's good background for you to, if you don't know much about it, if you just have an opinion. So a lot of your friends have opinions, you've got opinions, but read about it because Opinions are not fact, and we're more interested in fact than opinions. We have to be careful today. People are always using um, they, what they believe without any facts. So, okay, there's, there's that one. That's a pretty good one, and it's a nice orientation. Okay. Um, this one is kind of maybe a little crazy. Let's see what this one is. I think this guy is very sort of angry, I think. So as soon as this one comes up, again, where is it? It should be coming up. Yeah, here it comes. All right. So this one's talking about breaking the anti-immigrant fever. Um, and uh, so this is probably fairly pro-Hispanic um, or pro-minority. Um, so it's talking about this stuff. It gives an example. This woman in El Paso was picked up at a courthouse. She'd been seeking an order of protection because her, her husband was abusing her. Um, and they were tipped off by her husband. How nice is that? So, um, so they picked her up um, and accused her of being a gang member. Craziness. Um, wow. stuff, like that. stuff like that was going on. And so the point of this is that the way we're doing this is we prioritize fear. Um, we don't, there's no acceptance. There's no compassion. There's no, um, let's figure this thing out. If somebody's got a job, it seems to me, they're not a threat to the country. I mean, they're working, they're making money. They're probably paying taxes they don't want to pay. Um, so there's some, some rationale to that. So this is an interesting article to look at. Um, and then... This is a good one because it explains what is the migrant caravan and why did it happen and what's going on with that. And again, here's facts. We want to deal with facts. So when you guys write your paper, when you either for the policy or against the policy, use the facts. We don't want your opinion. We want the facts. Um, if you have an opinion and you think you're right, then find some facts to back it up. Okay, so what is the caravan and why does it matter? I'm talking about that. Um, and it explains many of them are fleeing persecution, poverty, and violence. There's that group. Um, violence in particular, poverty in particular. Um, but some people are just coming for opportunity. Now, I'm not really sure what, what percent of that, the percent of the group is coming just for opportunity. And we probably wouldn't um, admit people just for opportunity. We're admitting them for these desperation reasons. I mean, that's the kind of, because they're coming in, they're trying to come in illegally. Um, so this kind of gives some background to it and it shows where they're coming from. Here's that map and what their journey is. So here's one, this one coming from San Pedro. They're coming 2,700 miles. Um, how long do you think that would take you to walk? Anybody ever <laughs> walk 100 miles? No. A long way, especially with <laughs> children, with children, bringing children. You'd have to be fairly desperate to, to do this. That's the, that's very sad. Sad. So, um, and you know, they're in large groups, not because they're trying to storm the border. Let's say you're leaving 2,700 miles away and you have, you're dragging two of your kids with you, right? 
You're dragging two of your kids. Okay. You would want to be in a group, wouldn't you, to be safe? Okay. Yeah. So is, all right. So if you just joined the meeting, no worries. This is being recorded. So um, when the video is ready, then um, I'll share that with you and you can go and see the parts you missed. Right now we're talking about um, the caravans that were coming in 2018. They're still coming. I'm trying to get in the United States. And we're asking ourselves, why caravans? And we noticed that it was 2,700 miles and somebody was bringing children. Um, they're not safe by themselves, especially say a woman and a couple of children coming. Ah, no, the people along the way, they might abuse her easy. She's just, you know, no defense. And then um, who knows what they would do with the kids. So people get into groups where they can protect each other. Um, people are, um, someone is a lot less likely to attack you if you're in a big group than if you're just by yourself with no friends. Um, so that's kind of why it is. It's not people are coming in caravans to storm the, the um, wall. That's not what it is. Um, it's asking what do they want? So it explains that. What has been the US reaction, which has not been good. Um, there are many ways to handle this, but I don't know that the way we've been handling it is, is good. Um, and you guys know about that. Um, okay, and you see this fence they put in, if you can imagine, that's called razor wire. Nobody's going to crawl over the razor wire if you get trapped. You know, razors, you get cut like that. So that's not happening. Um, what are their options when they get here? And it talks about that. Um, and how they've been treated along the way. It talks about all this stuff. Um, so it's a good article to look at just to orient yourself in terms of what's going on. Um, Here's one more thing I want to look at, and then we're going to look at the pro con pieces. So this, while this is going, here we go. Here we go. So this one explains the migrant caravan. Um, and what it's about. Really good. What is a migrant caravan? It explains that, where they're coming from. Um, how did this caravan start? It explains that. That's good stuff. Um, why are caravan members leaving their home countries? It explains that. How many people in the caravan? It talks about that. Um, why is Trump so obsessed with the caravan? It talks about that. Um, is this a part of a border surge? So it's been called a surge. I don't think it's a surge. I think that was a sort of a political term to get us scared. So we would, you know, go along with whatever they said. Um, I think it's a process and I think it's going to continue. I don't think it's going to stop. We will always be the destination for poor people or people seeking asylum. What has the U.S. done so far? It talks about that. Um, will the caravan make it to the U.S.? What happens if it makes it to the U.S.? And this is talking about the caravan, but we're going to be having caravans. They won't be named caravans. If there are 50 people, I doubt they're called a caravan. It's only when they get to be large that they get on the radar. Um, and as you know, people have come for years. This is nothing new. Okay. Now I have two articles that I want you to use as your sort of mainstay articles. Um, kind of use these for your, so this one is pro-caravan. Um, well, not pro-caravan, but pro the reasons for it. And it's got reasons for it. So here we go. Um, and so this one's talking about um, pro-con, but this one's talking about, what is this one talking about? Uh, this one, it is good reasons. Why are they coming and explain the good reasons? And this guy, so this guy makes a little argument. Um, this other one over here, I believe is the con one. One's pro, one's con. I think, I, I don't know. I think this is the con one here. Yeah. Um, so, so this is critiquing it. This might be the pro one. I think the other one was the con one. So you've got those two to look at. And the reason these are good is because they kind of 
put people's thinking um, all together in one piece, thinking all together in one piece. Why do people think pro? Why do people think against it? Um, so these are the things you can be working with. Don't forget that when we went to that one, um, which I think is this one, I think it's this one. One of these is where we get a lot of things. No, I don't think it's this one. Let me see. No, it's not that one. Um, well, one of these has a whole bunch of stuff. I know we, we looked that up. Yeah, one of these has a whole bunch of things. Um, it's actually a search page which is a bunch of articles up. So that can help you when you're writing your essay. Okay, so these are your resources you're going to be working with. And then um, if we look at, let me stop the share for a minute and let's go back. Okay, so anybody questions, questions on this? Is this making sense to you? So are we going to compare and contrast again? No. Or, no, no. No, no you're going to, um, so I'll, sh I think I have that up in a minute. I'll show you in a minute before okay. that. All right. Yeah, no, you're going to have an introduction. You're going to have two summary paragraphs. You're going to have two paragraphs that are on for your side, the four parts. And then you're going to have um, a paragraph that explains the other side. Um, and then you're going to have a conclusion. Okay. So like that. And this one's different only because it has research. We have to put research in it. Right. Yeah, and we have, a, we have a kind of a long time to do it. I mean, we have four or five weeks for this one paper. This is not as complex as the comparative one. The comparative one's harder. This is just a standard argument. Um, you pick it, you, whatever way you, you believe it should go, you're going to take that side and you're going to use those pro and con articles sort of as base for what you're thinking. Um, and then use the other articles as resources to add information to sort of back you up. And you're probably going to have a couple of articles you bring in that are your own articles. Um, that you found. And so in that way, you'll have a pretty good, um, you know, you'll have a pretty good argument for your side and you'll have evidence for it. Um, you'll also acknowledge that the other person maybe has some point because, of course, let's say you're pro the caravan, you're pro, I don't know, helping them, you're more compassionate. And the other side says, no, we, we've got to keep them out because why? But they could overrun San Diego. They could overrun San Diego. So you want to talk about that other side and say, well, hey, we don't do something about it. We're on the border. Um, if these people, you know, come across the border here, are they going to try to stay here? Um, San Diego can only take so many people. We don't, we don't have um, endless money, you know. We can't put them all in our garages. I mean, what are we going to do? Um, people don't want people living under their house, especially if they're, um, they've already worked to get themselves where they are. They don't want that. So there's pluses and minuses on both sides. I think maybe in the long run, it's going to be a balance. We want to be compassionate. We, we have to consider what we can do. Yes. Charles. So basically, we have to argue why we should let him in. Or not. Or not. Yeah. Or not. OK. You pick a side. But OK. You, need to look at, you look at the material first and make sure that you're you got enough information. If you don't, then you have to do a little research and find out something that helps you back you up. Okay. okay. Have you guys done an argument before? No? Done an argument before? What, what an argument? Probably in high school you did. You just don't even know. Maybe. Right. Maybe. <laughs> so I think we're going to look at a little video now. Um, about. You are my first teacher with essays <laughs> are you kidding me oh that's crazy and you and you graduated from high school how could that be okay <laughs> i don't get that but anyway that was too many years ago and in mexico okay <laughs> i i should have been with that caravan <laughs> <laughs> listen mexico is supposed to be pretty good don't be knocking that uh, yeah i know let's see this it or I got the wrong one? Got the wrong one. Ah, we need this one. Argument explained. Okay, here we go. 
All right. I have a video here in one of these. Yes. Somebody question? No. Question, a bit of question. Okay, let me get back. All right. Um, so there's some paper, there's some, like the format I was telling you about is right there. Um, let me see if this is going to be the, no, this is the chapter. I don't see my video that I want. Maybe it's in here. We'll see if the link is attached. That would be good. Ah, uh, it's not attached. So I'll, I'll start with this. Um, no, I'm not going to start with this. I want I want to show you guys the video. Not in that one. Okay, so I can find it real easily. Good old YouTube um, has a lot of stuff. Well, you have become a pro with the computer now. <laughs> oh, no. Not, oh, not at all. So Look I at like you. <laughs> yeah, I'm here. I like this one because it's really simple. Now, it's not your whole thing. Um, but, and this was put out by the British people. Um, so you've got a bit of an accent in there. But anyway, I'm going to bring it up. Which one of those are you talking about? This one right here. So anyway, look, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to get some quotes that I thought I had, but I didn't. So I will do that. Um, so this is, they're going to explain to you that um, the essay is kind of like a hamburger. And it's kind of cool the way they do it. Um, you're going to have two more paragraphs besides what they say. So when we go back to the um, your format handout, I'll show that to you. But here, let's let's look at because they're they're the way they do it's pretty good, I think. We are going to learn the process of writing an argumentative essay in five short videos. What happened? So. We normally use a five-paragraph structure common in other types of essays, with two arguments supporting our view and one against. This is not the only way to write an essay. Six paragraphs are also often used. Today, we will use five, which is also known as a hamburger essay. This is made up of an introduction, three body paragraphs, and the conclusion. Let's start at the beginning. In this section, we're going to analyse the question and plan our essay effectively. It's important to plan your essay first. This ensures your reader can follow the progression of your argument. In an exam, it will also mean you get good marks for organisation and stru structure. Look for clues in the essay question. This will tell you what the task requires. Find these and they will help you answer it effectively. The main clues we can get from the text are... Listen, your essay is longer than 500 words. Just letting you know. Why? Indicate that you need to give a reason. This is your purpose. The key words of study and history tell us the subject we are writing about. Why study and history should be underlined. This is asking your opinion, so it requires your voice. Write an essay of 300 to 500 words. Listen, when it says your own voice, you guys are not going to use I. I think this, I believe this, and all that. You're going to use objective voice. You're going to say it should be this way. Or a good reason for it is this. So you won't be, it, it's kind of your voice, but it's not the I voice. It's the editorial voice, it's the academic voice, the formal voice. So you're going to be saying it in third person. Um, the best argument is this. 
um, so and so, whatever the last name is, says this thing um, seems to be um, making, you know, or providing a lot of evidence or a lot of facts or however you want to do it. So, but when you write it, I'll help you with that. We just don't want to use the I. We don't want to say, I believe, or my opinion is, or I think. We don't want any of that. Because if you do that, what happens is the reader says, well, who are you anyway? Do you have any authority to talk about this or is it just another opinion? When you don't do that, when you don't use the I voice, then you sound much more professional. People are much more inclined to listen to you and think, okay, this person's providing me with solid information, some facts. It's making sense to me. It's not an opinion. It's a research paper. It's something where this is all about um, the truth, not about what somebody believes. Okay. This shows how many words you need to write. Remember, the examiner doesn't want to read too much or too little. We have to give both sides of the argument in this essay, so that means we will write two paragraphs supporting our opinion or stand, and one paragraph presenting an opposing argument. Now we've analysed the question, we need to do a plan. We're going to write a five paragraph essay consisting of an introduction, three body paragraphs, two explaining our opinion or stand, and the other, the opposing argument, and the conclusion. Now we know our basic structure, we need to choose a method to plan our essay. There are several different ways to do this, such as a spider diagram, a positive and negative table, flowchart. Today, we're going to use a spider diagram. Next, consider what the main points you want to make are. Decide on your opinion or stand about the question. First, you need to ask yourself deep questions and note down your answers. Do you enjoy studying history? Why or why not? Do you think that there is any value in studying it? Why? What? So your question would be more about um, immigration or the caravan, but about, about immigration. So should we allow some immigrations for particular reasons? Why or why not? Um, should we always consider the caravan uh, an enemy? Why or why not? Um, are there ways, and that would be another question, are there ways to prevent a caravan? And for instance, that aid to those countries might be one way to, so people don't leave when they're happy. Um, a long time ago, 20, 25 years ago, nobody left Mexico really to come to the United States. It wasn't that popular because um, I had friends over there that were doing very well. And why come here? It's expensive. And they grew up there. Their friends are there. Why come here? Um, you know, when there's a downturn or when violence increases, then people are more likely to come. So people are mostly wanting to stay home. And I, that's maybe part of what you should consider. But you want to think of why are they coming? things like those questions, and then try to answer those. Why not? This is the basis for your brainstorm. Next, consider the main point you want to make. Decide your opinion about the question. Is studying history a good or bad thing? To answer this essay question, we have decided that it is a good thing. Put your question in a circle in the center of the page then write as many ideas as you can for and against the argument. Decide which points are... Do you like this? This is a really cool way to do it because you don't have to put them in any order at all. You just, you just put your main question and then put your thoughts like that. And you just write them on a piece of paper. It's, you know, it's not a formal process. It's, it's the stuff you're thinking of. Um, you don't have to keep it all in your head. And then, as you can see, the main topic or the main questions right there, and then your thoughts come out over here. Um, if you wanted to split it like this, like if something about for or against, then you could put the for on this side, you could put the against on that side. But this is a, a really interesting way to do it to, to help you think, organize yourself. Oh, positive and negative. Choose the two strongest ideas to support your opinion. You will need to think 
of an additional point connected to each, followed by an example. So choose the points you have the most to write about. These will be your main ideas for body paragraphs one and two. Now write a topic sentence for each one. This should summarise the whole paragraph in a short, clear sentence. It will be a general point. The sentences that follow will give more specific information about that point. Check that they are related to the question and your opinion. Yes, they are. Now, imagine someone is arguing against your opinion. What would they say? This is your counterpoint. Now you have the main ideas for each of your body paragraphs. In this video, we have looked at layout, question analysis, and planning. Don't forget to keep it simple. Write a five paragraph essay. Read the question and circle the clues. They will help you give a correct answer. Always plan your essay your opinion and your topic sentences. For more advice, visit us at Learn English Team. So that one's pretty good. Um, hmm. well, right, um, can you get out of this one? Yeah, okay, good. All right. Um, Any questions on that? Is that making sense? Yes. You sound like this is going to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's okay. You can cry. Um, just not right now. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. I'm going to bring this up just because it's under stuff. And now I'm going to bring you guys back. Where was I? I was somewhere. I was here. No. I don't like this. Okay, where am I? Here? I'm right there. Okay, so we're going to share this next one. Um, right, so we'll finish going through it, and then you'll have a big, um, long little video you can look at. You can keep going through it. What is this about? I don't know. What is this about? Okay, so this is culinary. Look at it. Oh boy, did you see that? <laughs> Can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because on my end, it said my internet connection is unstable. So if this meeting just kind of crashes on us, then we'll know what happens. Didn't pay the bill. Yes, you <laughs> did it. Sorry. 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 I paid the bill. Okay, let's see if I can go back here. Okay. Wow, I don't know where it's taking me. Let's make it come come to where I want to go. Oh, we'll get there. Yes. It's because um, you pay for mm -hmm. half of it, Mr. Osborne. I gave him everything I had. Isn't that enough? Hey, listen, I just feel that we need to, you know, enjoy Save it. Save money. And, <laughs> right? Good money. Save money, money for toilet paper. <laughs> ah, all that. Okay, so let's look at the format. Let's look at the format. Okay, now, you know, the other one said five paragraphs. So that's kind of a lie, a little bit of a lie, because we're going to do seven paragraphs. 
only because, um, let me see if it's on this one. Yeah, it's not this one. But this one is a good overview. So let me do this for overview. Um, the prompt, when I bring the prompt up, that'll tell you seven paragraphs. Okay. So when you think about it, you're going to have an introduction. Um, I like the way they explain that to you. So, but with the introduction, um, you can have, you can actually have two paragraphs if you feel you need it, but most people only need one. Um, so, wanna, yes. I'm sorry. So intro, one body paragraph and conclusion. Where did you get that from? I'm just saying. <laughs> no. <laughs> intro. And there's going to be five body paragraphs and conclusions. Now you heard me. I knew you heard me that time. <laughs> right. So that's what there's going to be. But this is just telling you in a general sense, there's going to be an introduction, right? Okay. And you know how to do an introduction. You have to have a hook, all that stuff. It says make your introduction interesting. How can you draw readers in? And then background information. So you want to give us some, some information about, you know, um, the United States and immigration or the United States and, and the caravan, anything, some background information. So before we even get into these two essays, we know um, that there's been a dispute. You know, there's, there's people have several ways of thinking about this thing. Um, some people feel like we're being racist. Some people feel like, well, like we need to protect ourselves against these um, people that are coming in to take our stuff. So some background like that. Um, and it says a background paragraph. I don't think this needs to be separate. I think this is, the, see it says optional. I think that should be part of the, um, of the introduction. Um, and it does, so this, I don't know why they spit it like this. It says some of the works being discussed. So in your introduction, you want to have like a one sentence um, summary or really just telling people that you're looking at this essay that's, uh, you know, thinking the, that the caravan is a bad thing that's happening. Um, and you're looking at this other essay that thinks the caravan is a good thing um, happening. And then you're going to have your thesis and your thesis is going to say which side um, is uh, I don't know, the more ethical side or the side that's a better policy for the United States, something like that. Okay, here's just an example of what a supporting paragraph looks like. So let's say this is the one that's your side. Um, the purpose of it is to prove your side, usually one paragraph. You start with a topic sentence, like they said, um, naming, you know, this thing you're looking at. So if we're looking at, um, If we're looking at the idea of why we let people in, um, we do have, we did sign an agreement, it's a human rights agreement, that we would let people in that um, come to our door and say, we've been threatened, our lives have been threatened by violence. Uh, my children's lives have been threatened. We usually let people come in like that. Um, we let people come in um, for reasons like that. Um, Poverty, I'm not, I'm not so sure we just let people come in for poverty. I don't think we do that. Um, although that might be something we should be thinking about. So your topic sentences, and I think once you read those things, you'll have a better idea what you want to talk about. Um, explain your claim, whatever it is. Introduce evidence supporting it. Um, quotes, things like that. Um, explain what that means, and then have a concluding sentence at the end of it. Just kind of like you've been doing. Nothing really different there. Um, when you get to the counter argument, that's the one right before the final conclusion. Um, this is where you want to anticipate this person reading this might not agree with you. So you want to sort of present um, a counter counterpoint or the counter argument. You want to be objective about it and reasonable. You want to represent what the other side is thinking. Um, and then you want to maybe agree with one or two of their points if you think you should. Um, and on the other hand, you want to refute them. You want to come back with, well, that's true, but this is really more important or something like that. Um, and then your conclusion. Your conclusion is kind of a two-part thinking on that. It doesn't have to be two paragraphs, but 
part of it is you want to kind of sum up what you, your main points and what you had talked about. Um, and then the second part of that paragraph is the critical thinking. Um, and we want to know why we should care about this issue. Why should we care about this issue? Um, and then this part where it says we want a more complex understanding. And that's where I think we would probably be talking about this idea that you can't build a wall and stop, um, you know, movement of people. You can't do it, especially if they're motivated for strong reasons. So we have to figure out, since it's going to continue, it will continue, what are we going to do? We need to develop a policy, some kind of policy, some kind of mechanism that supports people so that that movement maybe slows down um, or, you know, something. Um, so we need to create a solution because it's not stopping. Um, maybe that would be the end of your paper. And they're making a point here is that your conclusion should, should serve as a climax of your paper. In other words, you're selling your um, argument. And so you could project, for instance, if we don't do something, what would that look like? Um, consider if we continue on the way we're going, what does that look like? And so you can do some of those things in your conclusion. All right. Um, so that's that. And I don't think I've given you the thing I wanted to give you, so I will have to add that, which is our particular format. It's the prompt. Um, I don't see it, but I know I did it. So um, this little piece right here is very short. It's a little chapter on argument and what it is. So if you're really not sure what an argument is, this is something we used in the English 71 class, which is the class before the 114. We don't offer that anymore. But it's a really it's, easy, what? It is sulfur. 71? Yes. Well, it's probably only one class of it, right? Yeah, only no, one class. Yeah. No, there, right. So I think it's an important class, but we're not doing it anymore. So anyway, um, <clears throat> so this is a couple of pages. I think it's maybe four pages or six pages, it says. But it goes through it in a real easy way, like it tells you the four good basis, <clears throat> the four basics of a good argument, strong definite position, good reasons, supporting evidence. Consider the other side and then you write it with energy. You don't like, it's not like a boring thing. Um, there's an example of one. Uh, I don't know. This is something where you could write, um, you know, an argument about it. And they're saying that education is having trouble because of the money, um, because of the cost of the building, because of the cost of transportation. <clears throat> so it says the cost of education is too high. But you could make an argument about that one. <clears throat> Here it's talking about what's the main point of an argument. And it's saying that when you do the main point of an argument, since you're making an argument, it's not a fact. You can't think that what you're saying is a fact. So when you make an argument, you want to put in there should, could, a word like that. It's called a qualifier. <clears throat> so in this case, somebody should say, well, should, should young people buy insurance? And this one says young people should or should not be required to buy insurance. And so you want to take a position. Um, there's no absolute to that because people, there's two sides. There's facts on both sides. If it were a fact, we wouldn't have an argument. Um, the sky is blue, pretty much. I mean, you can argue all you want, but most of the time it's blue. Most of the time, grass is green, unless it's dying. Um, so, you know, the should thing, this qualifier, gives you a stronger position. Um, and this is how do you get yourself more interested in what you're doing. So imagine yourself arguing with somebody that disagrees with you. Um, imagine how the issue could affect you or your family personally. And so when we're looking at the caravan, especially in San Diego, we could. Um, or people that you care about. Imagine you're representing a large group of people who care about the issue and their lives will forever be changed. Imagine that. And it's up to you to, to figure it out. Um, when you're looking at the topics in it, it sort of shows you. You have an issue, sense of position, is your, is your either thesis in it or topics in it. So this, in your case, would be your thesis sentence at the end of the introduction. 
It says daycare facilities should be provided at a low cost to employees. So you guys are going to be arguing that um, something about the caravan should be, and then you're going to have your position. Um, notice the words that can go in there are could, must, require, should, would. These are the words you want to put in your um, argument statement so that it, it gives you room to sort of wiggle. Um, when you're looking at reason and evidence, these are the things you want. You want some facts. If you have examples, there's a couple of examples in there that are actually little stories about people and what's happened to them. Um, if you can get some expert opinion, some of those articles are experts talking about it. You would want that. That's all good evidence. Um, so this, for instance, is, is what something looks like. You've got a position that pays to stay in college. The reason college graduates usually earn more than people without college. Evidence, community college graduates earn 58% more than high school graduates and 320% more than high school dropouts. So there's good information just to go to community college. Um, when you get to the four-year school, it's even more. Okay, so that's a, a position, the reason for it, um, and the evidence to prove that this is true. Here's another one. Genetically modified food should be, should be banned until they have been thoroughly tested for safety. All right, the reason. Currently, nobody's certain about the effects. Um, evidence. The government and biotech industry have not produced convincing evidence. This is not a particularly strong side um, to the genetically modified foods. It's more speculative. I doubt they're going to find a lot of research because genetically modified foods are one of the reasons why food is cheap now. Um, if you go to Costco and you want to buy fish, uh, most of it's been genetically modified. Most of it's what they call farm grown. It's not wild in the ocean anymore. Um, it's why it's cheap. If we had to go out in the ocean and hunt for it, um, and in the old days, for instance, fish didn't have as much meat on it. Chicken didn't have as much meat on them. That's all been modified to produce chicken with more meat, fish with more meat, vegetables that are bigger. So it's, anyway, this is probably not a good argument, but there's just an example. Um, and then <clears throat> when you when you pick your stuff, think about um, the kinds of reasons and evidence that are most convincing. Try to do that. Um, make sure that you don't write something there where you say, well, everybody knows this or everybody believes this. Don't write stuff like that. If it's common knowledge, why would you put it there? Um, you know, everybody knows it, so don't put it in. It's not going to support your argument very well. Um, these are some other examples of practice you could do. Um, <clears throat> and then they're talking about in your conclusion, they want you to make it, make sure that you're convincing readers of your position. If you can make it memorable and dramatic, they say, I don't know. That sounds good. I don't know. Um, when you're figuring out what arguments to put first, most of the time people put them in, I mean, what um, support to put first, most of the time people put it in order of importance. Start with your some people can start with least important or save the most important later, or some people start with the most important stuff you've got. Um, transitions, when you're going between one reason to the other, um, one argument to the other, uh, would be like this. For example, in addition, in fact, the first um, reason to support your position would be this. Um, another reason, you've done things like this, or more important, or most important, like that. Being able to do it. Okay, so there's um, all of our resources so far that we can use. Um, for those of you that have kind of gotten your papers done, or I think you guys are all in the process, I'm showing you this stuff because um, this week we want to get our papers kind of finished. And then over the weekend, you guys are going to be looking at that. You're going to be considering all that. And then on Tuesday, we'll begin this next paper. Um, so that's what we're going to be doing. Make sure you put your rewrites, if you've got any revisions, on there, like we were looking at. Um, if you have questions, send them to me. But until you actually post an essay, Kareem, I'm saying I'm looking at you. Until you actually post an essay, I can't give you help. In fact, 
uh, you know, what's that doing, right? What do you think? Okay, so give me some of your stuff, lady. All right, so I can do my job. I'm gonna be talking to other students um, that are, notice there's only the four of you on here. Um, they're hoping that you'll ask all the questions that they would ask, I suppose. <laughs> what do you think they're doing? You think they're just like, who knows what? Have they decided? So, that, we yeah. should get extra credit for, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> attending <laughs> class. And you will. No, and you yes. will, but can get those points. That's right. That is, that is very much correct. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. Um, if you're talking to anybody else in the class and just hasn't been doing much, I know. Shara, won't you talking to Eli? Yeah. Um, I spoke to him about a week ago, and I called uh, Camila, the girl that sat next to me, but she's never picked up. I know. I think people are hiding and they put their head in the sand. It's, if I don't look, <laughs> it's going to go away. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to probably be, I guess, dropping people at some point. I think the final drop date is maybe the 23rd next week. Um, and I know a couple of people are talking about giving me some essays, but I know one person I talked to is she's got a whole lot of more hours now because I don't know if people are getting sicker or if they're just not don't, not wanting to come to work, but she's got a lot of hours, so she's having trouble getting her stuff done. So I don't know. Um, and like you say, I call people and they don't they don't talk to me. So who knows? Um, I'm stopping the recording now.